Kieran Lynch and welcome to Overcast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode, we bring you latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. We're joined in this episode by Cara Shorten, Vet and Ruminant Technical Advisor with MSD Animal Health, to discuss various aspects of dealing with orphan farms. Cara explains us where the condition typically occurs and some of the predisposing factors. We discuss the vaccination process, timing of administration and the interval until immunity is reached. Cara takes us through the actual vaccination procedure, highlighting some practical tips and some of the pitfalls. Finally, we move on to discuss treatment options that are available in the face of an outbreak. We start off, however, with Cara explaining a little bit more about the condition. ORF is a virus. It's a pox virus. So it's because of that, it's a really resilient virus. And what it causes is it causes a disease called contagious pustular dermatitis. So in a nutshell, it's contagious between sheep it's also zoonotic so humans we can pick it up ourselves and it's a dermatitis so it affects the skin of of sheep and it causes a really nasty kind of a lesion a pustular um lesion and that virus care that's present on the skin like we typically think of it on the nose and the mouth but it can also occur in other areas on lambs and ewes it can it can pretty much occur anywhere where where there's no wool and it's especially prone to cause lesions around the muzzle it can cause it on the ears as well it can certainly cause it on the feet as well where where the skin meets the hoof, any place like that where, where the skin is quite um, sensitive, it can, it can cause a lesion in a number of places. It's quite a nasty condition. Like, What are the predisposing factors? Why do we see a bigger instance in some years and on some farms than on others? Yeah, it's, it's really nasty and it's really sore um, on, on the lamb or on the goat that's affected. Predisposing factors, I suppose, are anything that is going to leave sheep or lambs a bit immunosuppressed. So lambs, for instance, that didn't get enough beastings, didn't get enough colostrum at the beginning, they're, you know, they, they do have a harder challenge. Um, anything that causes hunger, and by that I mean if we get a rough spell in the weather, which has a knock-on effect that maybe the yews don't have a lot of milk and therefore the lambs are, are constantly going back, so, trying to suckle and, and bite the, the udders, um, that certainly does leave them more prone. Wet weather as well, because naturally during wet weather the skin is it's softer, so um, we are more inclined to see problems when in, in times of bad weather. And also, I suppose certain farms are more prone to it as well. And reasons behind that can be varied. It'd be a case that they have a lot of um, thistles and, and things like that. You could argue that if lambs or sheep weren't hungry, they wouldn't go to that. And then you'll also have the case that ORF is a really resilient virus, that it can live on particular paddocks and it can live in houses. So you will have farms that are, are particularly challenged with it year after year. It can survive for quite some time in sheds and round hand facilities. Oh, unbelievable. It can survive for over a year in sheltery places, even outside. I believe it can survive for that long. Um, it is really resilient. It is hard as well to kill with with the disinfectant. And all, a lot of the times the sheds that we may be dealing with and certainly outside, you know, you can't actually clean and disinfect the way you would like to. And you can also have carrier sheep as well, which um, they don't have signs of ORF, you know, they, they, they have no lesions, no nothing, but they are carriers within the flock. And of course, then they keep it going within that flock. So most practical terms, Cara, when it's in a flock, it's there to stay. Yes. Yes. So it is. If, if it's in a flock, it is there to stay. Um, and uh, we do have a vaccine for it. And the vaccine is a fundamental part of try, trying to control it within that flock, along with, um, you know, just good husbandry and, and actually keeping the immune system of your, your lambs and your yews as good as possible, plus cleaning and disinfection. So it's slightly different than some of the vaccines we're more commonly used to on farms. How does it work and when can you use it? Yeah, so it is, it's, it's, it's a, different, a different type of vaccine and it is a little bit tricky to give, um, but that shouldn't turn anyone off. It's just a matter of getting used to giving it. So it is a live vaccine and it is an absolutely tiny dose. So it comes in just one size, a 50 dose bottle, but the actual dose size is absolutely tiny. And that is the reason that it comes with, um, you have to get an applicator with it, a specific applicator, because otherwise you, you couldn't give that small of a dose um, to, to the animals affected. Um, unlike other vaccines, majority of vaccines are actually injected, but this vaccine, you give it by causing scarification on the skin. So you actually have to cause a scar, a slight tear in the skin. That's the way you, you give it. Um, so it does take a little bit of, of getting used to for that reason. So it's effectively like a deep scratch on the skin. Where are you giving that on them? Yeah, so a deep scratch on the skin. And it's important that we emphasize that it is a deep scratch. So you don't want to be breaking the skin entirely. You just want to be causing a, a scratch on the skin that will allow that tiny dose um, of vaccine to, to just seep in. 
where are you giving it is super important, Kieran. It's the, the advice is to give it in the under the front leg, so essentially the armpit of the lamb or the O. And I realize from the, doing this myself, this is not an easy place to give, but it is so important that you give it here. That people will remember anyone that has been using an ORF vaccine for years, they will remember that um, a, a number of years ago now, greater than five years ago, there was a, a similar vaccine on the market that you gave in the groin. This, this vaccine here, Scabivax Forte, should not be given in the groin. It should be given only under the, um, the front leg. The reason for that is after you give the vaccine, it's quite a slow onset of action. So it takes anywhere from four to eight weeks before you have full cover from the vaccination. So if you give it under the front um, leg, there is no chance then that, that that individual lamb or yo will actually nuzzle their own where you've scratched them, nuzzle their own, their own lesion. Um, so that's the reason that it really has to be given there. And that is super important. Carol, the amount you're playing is very small and the applicator is different than what some of us may be used to. You might just take us through. How do you set that up? Yeah, so it, it is important that the dose is absolutely tiny. So you, there's only one way to apply it and apply the correct amount. And that's with the with the applicator that is specific for, for the vaccine. So the, the setting up of it and the priming, um, it's just worth taking your time with it. So there's a little plastic sleeve and the, the tiny bottle of vaccine fits into that sleeve, which is then attached to the, to the applicator gun. It's important then that the needle on the inside of the applicator gun is actually in the middle of the rubber for the vaccine bottle so that it's all nice and secure. Once that then is all attached as, as one entity, the vaccine bottle plus the applicator, then you have to prime it. Now, essentially what you're doing is you're getting it to a stage that um, when you go to vaccinate, that you will, you're set up and you will be dispensing just the correct amount. So in order to prime it, you hold it, you hold it away from you. So you hold the two prongs away from you and it takes about 10 presses of the applicator for it to be fully primed but just keep an eye on it it's not always it could be nine it could be 11 so you just keep an eye until you see the first appearance of of the of vaccine on the two prongs and it's it's kind of a greeny bluey color so you'll see it there and um, so once you've done that then it is actually primed so that's your fo- first dose and um, i've spoken to people that have done an awful lot of lambs over their lifetime and discussed with them exactly how they do it and there is just, and it's only a slight thing, but for anyone who's, who's doing a lot of lambs, it may, this may be useful to them. Um, so you need to make a scratch on the lamb, that scar on the lamb of, of about four centimetres long. And it's only one line. So prehistoric, over five, probably 10 years ago now, the old or faxing used to have to make an X, not, not this one. You just make one single line where you break the skin. Um, and then you want the vaccine. So the little bit of liquid of vaccine to go within that line. So some people do the scarification and then press the prime button. So then they put the, the little bit of vaccine where they have broken the skin. Others do the prime first so that they have the vaccine, the tiny dose of vaccine on the prongs, and then they make the scarification. So it's only a small thing. Really, it doesn't matter which you do. What is important is you break the skin and the vaccine goes in the broken skin. It is a lay vaccine. And look, you just mentioned lambs. Typically, we think about vaccinating lambs. Where, what age can we start at? And should we consider yours as well in that? Yeah, so the lambs can be vaccinated from birth. They can be vaccinated from their first day of life. So that makes life easy. Um, yeah, this is this is always a bit of a tough question. Do we just vaccinate the lambs? I mean, most flocks will only see ORF in the lambs or will see ORF predominantly in the lambs. Um, however, if you only vaccinate the lambs, there is a chance then that those lambs can pass ORF, can pass the actual disease to the O's, especially on the others. And it is one way to end up with a lot of cold O's. Um, so In an ideal world, it is best to vaccinate absolutely everyone. um, And it's the way you'll get the best return from the vaccine to vaccinate the lambs and the O's. However, there are a number of flocks, and I I understand it, that they just go in and vaccinate the lambs. If that is the case, you have to keep a close eye on the on the others of the O's to make sure that they don't pass vaccine. They don't pass, sorry, not vaccine. They don't pass the disease to the O's. One thing as well, after you vaccinate them, so you you cause a a line um, of kind of an inflammation to begin with. Um, This in turn then over the next seven weeks will turn into a scab and that scab is really infectious because you're using a live vaccine. So anywhere where that scab, that scab is treat that like a disease as well. So any place where you've vaccinated the lambs and the scab can can be a source of infection for the yews as well. That's another important element, like unlike a lot of vaccines, we hope they work on the work based on the fact hopefully we have less mortality or otherwise. In the case of an off vaccine, you can actually see did you Mm. get a take or not? Yeah, you can. So 
in essence, you can check to see that it works, which is, is, is quite handy. So what we refer to is we, we say that you vaccinate them today and then in seven to 10 days time, you check for a vaccine take. Now, you don't have to check every every lamb or every yoda you, you vaccinate, but it is a good idea to check a portion of them. And for checking for take means that you check that site. So under the, the front leg, the armpit uh, where you have vaccinated them and you check to see that you have a line with little pustules, little blisters on it. And that's what you should see. So that's that's a sign that that's that's good vaccine take, that the vaccination process was successful. And it's it's such a good idea to, to check them after, because if you don't check them, you don't know that one. Have you done it right? You know, there are a number of things because it is a slightly difficult vaccine to give until you get into the swing of it um, and that the lambs have actually responded to it. So it's a, it's an absolute must to check. Given the fact that it takes four to eight weeks for that immunity to kick in, it's really important if you do have an issue with lambs, you focus, it's important you get in early. Like the timing of that really torn out from pens is probably the ideal time to consider it. Yeah, if you can vaccinate them as they're being turned out, that's it's ideal. Um, now, the one caveat with that is that it only comes in the one size bottle. So it only comes in a 50 dose bottle. And because it is a, a it's a live vaccine, it has to, it really should be used that day. So it says on paper, it says use within eight hours. And that is quite important. Look, it's not a case that by the eighth hour that the vaccine is going to stop working. But we know that if it is or if it is used within that eight hours, that you're going to get the maximum protection from the vaccine. So to try and and do all at the one time. Um, yeah, it, it's important. Look, just when we're talking about this, it is zoonotic, it is contagious. We've talked about the scab being contagious between sheep. Obviously, when you're handling the vaccine, handling the lambs or checking them, correct PPE is important. And even the applicator going, making sure it's clean when we're doing it. Yeah, so anything to do with um, vaccinating against ORF or ORF as the disease itself, it is zoonotic. We can pick it up. So it's it's super important that... Um, anyone who's immunosuppressed, that they're not in contact with the applicator, the vaccine or lambs that, that could or sheep that could have ORF. Um, and also for the for the rest of us that are hale and hearty to make sure that we wear gloves, disposable gloves and anything that is used, any of the gloves um, that are used around the time of vaccination to make sure that they are disposed of, you know, just have a bag with you and put them all in the bag and, and tie it at the end um, because you can you could theoretically pick up or from the from the vaccine itself and um, something that else that is also worth noting with this is at the time that you're given it the applicator because this is a live vaccine it's important not to use a disinfectant on the applicator so by all means you can wash it with warm water again you should have gloves on while doing this in case there's there's any of the the vaccine still on it and um, but don't use a disinfectant because a disinfectant would be capable of killing the vaccine because it is live Good point. Point well made. And I assume, Cara, in the case of you're going between a lot of animals too, that you don't want a secondary infection here either. Yeah, and we do see it that if, because you're you're essentially you're breaking the skin, so it's very easy then to get a secondary infection, like a bacterial infection that you could end up with an abscess. And um, one thing that really does work well to minimise this, we know we can't use disinfectants or we could kill the kill the vaccine uh, itself, but even just to clean it with a bit of blue blue paper or cotton wool. Um, and to make sure that you dispose of that correctly as well. But just to clean it in between goes, because sheep naturally have quite an oily skin, and so it's perfect for bacteria. So I have seen that that definitely makes a big difference, that you just clean the sprongs of the applicator while you're going. You don't have to clean after every one, but you know, even after every five, after every 10, it, you'll end up with less um, secondary infections at the site where you're vaccinating. You don't want to compromise. And look, it's always the basics that we can fall down on. Cara, in the yeah. case of a flock that has off or lambs appearing with off, treatment of them lambs, like we're not necessarily able to treat the virus, but there can be secondary infection. Yeah, yeah. So the, the virus itself, um, you know, once they actually have lesions, you, you essentially there is no treatment for it. But what you do is you treat the clinical signs. The number one clinical sign, as far as I'm concerned, is pain. That is it, it, it's the reason that they stop sucking. Um, so pain relief is paramount. And then other things, there are, there are virucidal sprays and that that you can spray on the muzzle. Um, what I would, and, and then sometimes you will need an additional antibiotic if you have a nasty infection. So if you have, you know, a, a, an abscess or a kind of a smelly infection too. One thing I would say to everyone is, um, not being smart, but I wouldn't put anything on a lamb that I wouldn't put on my own skin because this is a skin infection. So there's no need to be ap applying all these weird and wonderful potions and um, simply all you need blue spray or a virucidal spray but nothing nothing more nasty or, or more caustic than that because 
at the end of the day, you have a lesion there that you're trying to heal. So anything that's going to damage the skin further is actually sending you in the wrong direction. So in the case of an outbreak, can you go in with the vaccine on the clear lambs or the infected lambs? Yeah, you can. You can go in um, and people people have done it in flocks and, and you know, it, it does help. And um, you, you would ideally go into everyone and um, ones that have lesions and all and especially the ones that don't. I mean, if you only have a couple of lambs that have lesions, if it were an option to separate them plus their yos from the rest, that would help. Because the thing is, it's the lesion itself that is infectious. If it's not an option to do that because you, you have it in quite a number, then you just go in and you vaccinate them all off the face. Um, one thing to note, if you are vaccinating lambs that already have little lesions of ORF, don't expect miracles because uh, it does take a minimum of four weeks before you have immunity from the vaccine, but things will be getting better all the time. Um, and in lambs that actually have lesions, and these are hopefully in the minority because prevention is always better, they won't actually get vaccine take. So where you've scarred them to give them the vaccine, don't expect take on them. They won't get it. But hopefully maybe prevent them for reinfection at a later date. Exactly. Yeah, because you will get up to 12 months protection from the vaccine, um, which is, you know, which is pretty good and which is what we want. I really appreciate your time today. It was great getting that update on it. Thanks very much. That's great, Kieran. Thanks a million. Okay, we're going to have to leave this episode there at this point. I'd like to thank Cara again for giving up her time to be with us. I think she's given us a better understanding of the condition of ORF, how we go about controlling the hen of and how we treat in the case of an outbreak. As she highlighted in a number of cases, it is a zoonotic condition, so care needs to be taken when handling arms at ORF or handling the vaccine as it can be transmitted to humans. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates from our sheep programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Jogger Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and listen in to any of our episodes.